week's episode is powered by Golden Proportions Marketing. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Meatball Mafia. I'm Christina Sarge. And I'm Allison Micheletti. <laughs> Thanks to Netflix and HD. HDTV, making your life tidy and transforming a fixer-upper have made organization of your life and space, as well as home renovation, a new sensation. Imagine if Marie Kondo or Joanne Gaines herself could come to your practice to organize your life as well as make your practice beautiful and organized. You're probably thinking, well, meatballs, HDTV, they have not specialized yet in a juggernaut that focuses just on dental practices. (laughs) And for that, you would be correct, but we have somebody special with us here today that we'd like to introduce you to, Miss Andrea Greer. Hi. She has been helping, she's been helping practices for over 25 years, and she's been sharing her love of organization, time management, and decor to provide productive and beautiful workspaces for dental pra- professionals. Without further ado, please meet Andrea Greer. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I have to say, this is our first interaction with each other. Uh-huh. I believe you and Christina have met yeah. in person, real live and live in color, right? Um, at one point, but I have to say, when she told me we were going to have you as a guest and started talking about your organization, your color coding, your barcode systems, I was like, "Oh, this speaks to me <laughs> so much." I am such a oh my gosh color code everything sometimes I think I drive other people crazy with my crazy but yeah it's pretty it's easy to understand it's I don't understand why you wouldn't wouldn't do it so I told Allie she's gonna have a girl crush after (laughs) (laughs) it sounds right up my alley so let's um learn a little bit about you as a a person. Um, So you are the founder of On Point Space. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that business and what what you do? Sure. So my entire career has been in dentistry. And about 10 years ago, I started doing some consulting, uh, became full-time doing consulting about seven years ago, and then launched my own dental practice management consulting business two years ago. And what I found was, is that there was a piece missing in the general industry about really recognizing how closely tied the patient experiences, the appearance of the practice. And I felt like that would be a perfect fit for me because I absolutely love, have always loved decorating and organizing. I'm that person that, you know, I go in and I like to organize all the paper clips and the stools and You know, when I was seven or eight years old, I can remember like spending hours flipping through office supply catalog. I mean, I just always really (laughs) loved doing that kind of thing. Um, I'm a big fan of Marie Kondo and Fixer Upper. So (laughs) doing those home improvement projects is always really fun for me. Um, You know, of course, I, I know quickly when I'm out of my depth and I know when to hire a professional. Um, but really on point space, on point space was built, um, and, and really launched as a, um, it was launched after I launched my, my dental consulting company on point dental consulting. And so really is, uh, um, another piece of that. And I just love working with clients, both solopreneurs at home, as well as dental practices in helping to really elevate their the surroundings um, that they either work in or that their patients are experiencing when they come into the practices. It's just an absolute joy to me to be able to work with people in that way. So Andrea, you said you spent your entire career in dentistry. How did you first get introduced to being part of the dental community? Um, you know, you know, I started like so many, I started accidentally somebody you know offered me a job and it was a dental assisting chair side job and it's like try that you know I, I had no idea um, where my career would take me at that time and I realized pretty quickly that I wanted to do more and so I went to dental hygiene school and practiced dental hygiene I would in the I would say it was probably in the year 2000 um, that our practice that I was working in we hired a dental practice management consultant to come in and teach us, you know, strategies and systems and verbal skills and 
communication skills and all of these really fabulous things. And I can remember vividly sitting in that room with her, with my team, and thinking that's what I want to do. I want to do what she's doing. And so my entire career after that was toured, was with this end goal in mind of being becoming a consultant. And now, um, you know, once I achieved that, then I started looking at what's the next goal. And the next goal was becoming a speaker. And so I'm my speaking practice. And I absolutely love speaking um, to large and small groups. It's just so much fun for me to get up and um, talk to a, a, a group of people. Um, and, and then with On Point Space, I'm really uh, bringing in something that I've loved for years and years and that I've always done on the side. And I've, I have to say, I've said for many years that if I had, you know, you get that question, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do? And I've often said I would go back and be, I would, if I had to do it all over again, I'd be an interior designer. And so now I get to bring that piece of it into the dental practice. And it's not just the design and how pretty it looks, but it's really being a functionality and a flow and really understanding how practices work and how they need to be able to lead their patient through the experience in their practice. And so being able to marry those has been wonderful. Absolutely. Well, I think that brings up a really great, a really great point. Uh, you, you kind of touched on it just a little bit was the, the design and the decor of the practice is absolutely an important part of how patients view you as a practitioner and view your business. I mean, you can have all of the greatest technology in the world, but if your practice hasn't been, your carpet hasn't been changed since you know, 1972, like people are going to unfortunately just assume probably some inaccurate information. Absolutely. hundred um, percent. You know, the thing that we have to remember in dentistry, everybody talks about the patient experience and what is the patient experience like? And what we have to really, really remember is that patients, obviously they don't have the technical knowledge, right? Typically. Um, and we can tell them about the typical, technical knowledge, the technical pieces of our practice and our abilities and what fancy equipment we have and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if they, they are judging us 100% on how they feel. That's right. That's the only thing they can go by. Mm -hmm. And so when they drive up to a practice and it looks shoddy from the outside and unclean or unkept, Um, it's, it's making a statement right then. It's the first visual opportunity that we have to make a first impression. And as we know, people judge you, they make that, they make their decision on that first impression. We have seven seconds. That's it. Mm -hmm. Seconds to make that, uh, make a really powerful, impactful first impression. So I always encourage practices, walk into your office and pretend you've never seen it and walk in and in the first third, excuse me, first seven seconds, what would be your judgment of your practice? Right. Right. And so if people are, you know, um, they don't do the updating and I'm not thinking, you know, I don't feel like decor needs to be updated like constantly, like every, you know year every two years or something like that it really depends on what kind of finishes they do if they go super trendy then yeah absolutely they need to refresh more often right yeah do something more timeless like that beautiful wood background that you have right Mm -hmm. that's timeless but if we were to you know right now grays are really in and if we were to do grays throughout the entire practice um that would look lovely for another couple of years and then we're going to have to bring it back around to something more timeless and and follow those trends a little bit more. So, I mean, we're already seeing that. So yeah, Mm -hmm. it's all about how they feel. So what are some timeless updates or easy things that you would recommend to a practice that they could do today or even do themselves? Yeah. Great question. Um, One thing is, is um, when you're dealing with your flooring, I, I tend to stay away from like right now, a big trend along the lines of fixer upper and some of the other things that we're seeing is a lot of that farmhouse, quote unquote, farmhouse rustic Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. or a lot of gray washed woods that we're seeing in the flooring. And I kind of tend to 
steer a little bit away from those and go with something a little bit warmer. Like what you have on your background is perfect. That would be a beautiful flooring, right? But if we have something that's got a lot of, of grays or, um, or even like color, sometimes they'll put like, you know, paint color type feel on it, like a chip paint. Um, you know, that's going to feel very trendy. And in, you know, a couple of years, it's going to look really outdated. Whereas a nice, a warmer one, I like a lot of variation in wood um, when we're talking about flooring because that covers up, you know, dust. Um, sometimes it's hard to get all the dusted corners every single time. And so right. there's, you know, little things on the floor or whatever before we have a chance to sweep that up. It's not going to be super obvious. So um, wood flooring or um, right now vinyl planking is very popular um, because it's holding up. So it's it's not the it's not going to beat up like wood floors. It's going to last a lot longer. Um, it's it's definitely going to outlast a laminate flooring and it's not as hard as a tile flooring. Um, and tile is a big that would be a big project, a big um, mm -hmm. stall. And so cost of right. plank flooring is um, going to save you a little bit there as well. Um, <clears throat> timeless, um, I would say do a real nice neutral, whether it be on the grayer side or on the beige side, beige is actually making a comeback, um, and white walls and that kind of thing. We do want some warmth in there. Um, so, uh, something like that with accents of color. Um, another mistake that I see people make, I feel like it's a mistake, um, unless you're in a pediatric practice where you can really play up a theme. I tend to right. steer people away from themed decor, such as um, a really common one is like a mountain theme or a beach theme. So instead, mm -hmm. of, you know, the starfish and the shells and the, you know, the, the netting and, you know, the beach netting and, and stuff like that. And really bringing in, you know, like Hobby Lobby came and exploded in your office. So instead <laughs> of doing something like that, I tend to, I tend to um, feel that an elegant, a more elegant approach and more timeless approach is just the feeling. So beautiful abstract artwork that invokes the feeling of the beach, but it's not a photograph of a beach or a painting of a beach, that kind of thing. Um, mountains, same thing. So it's more about the colors that you bring in and the finishes that you bring in um, rather than a picture of the mountains or a picture of, you know, wild animals or whatever. So, so I tend to steer more that way. But of course, if the client is, you know, if I have a, a client that, um, you know, they're just really into ducks or moose or whatever, I think in small amounts, nice, classy, not Hobby Lobby stuff. I love Hobby Lobby, but not for decor in an elegant right. practice. I think we can really, um, you can bring in elements of it, but not go overboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to really go overboard. So right. I hope that's kind of answering some of the question that you have there. Yeah, it actually brings up a, a conversation that I was having the other day of when designing a dental practice, I certainly understand the, mm -hmm. the excitement, the, you know, I could do whatever I want with right. this. It's a blank slate. I can go crazy. Um, now, when you work with your clients, do you ever have to have that conversation of, uh, this is, I know this is really what you, what you love and, but based off of what we know of your area, it might look a little like too classy, too yes. expensive. Mm -hmm. and you're going to send the mind. wrong impression. Absolutely. Because we don't, you know, so I have a beautiful, lovely client who's in New Jersey. Um, and I just work with her on um, helping her with her private office in her dental practice, um, which was a shambles. It's a very small space. She had no organization. And so I created a beautiful design board to give her furniture pieces that would suit her needs and gave her organization tips. And um, she's just in love with it. Um, her practice is a Medicaid practice and she loves serving that population. But she has to be very mindful. You're absolutely right. She's got to be very mindful of the pieces of furniture that she brings in um, and the way the practice looks. Um, because if she goes over the top, people are going to be resentful. 
she could also be targeting herself for theft. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it just, it really does depend on who is your patient demographic and you want to speak to that demographic for sure. Or even in, inadvertently pricing yourself out. Absolutely. Like go to, go to your website or, you know, view your office online and they see like, wow, this is beautiful and they're going to be too expensive really upscale. I can never afford this. Yes. And that's, and really they probably could, but they didn't even try, you know, they exactly. didn't even try exactly. to see. So, right. I mean, what would you recommend? Like this is a, a example. So, uh, we, we have a client that recently just purchased their first practice, very excited coming into an established practice. And, the previous owner, um, you know, that we hear this sometimes a lot from our dentists. I want to take this Walmart and make it a Neiman Marcus. <laughs> and I'm sure you hear something similar. One of the challenges that they have is they obviously going in, want to make subtle changes that aren't going to cost them an arm and a leg that they could possibly do themselves, like replacing the, the flooring or coming in on the weekend in paint. Yeah. One of the challenges that they have is that the the dental chairs, while they're beautiful and they're state of the art, they were just purchased by the previous dental dentist. They are lime green. <laughs> Very bold. Um, we are working with them now to try to incorporate that as an uh, accent color, yeah, but complementing it with other colors. What would your recommendations as the, the expert in decor be that if you have something that you can't replace and is a very bold statement cur currently in the practice, how do you typically work around that to, to make I, it a positive? Sure. You're absolutely right. I am. You're spot on that they just need to be brought in and, and that color needs to be incorporated in small doses. I would say in small doses, um, into their practice as their as their part of their branding. Um, they're fortunate in that lime green right now is a very popular color and it's actually part of my logo. Um, as I'm sure you noticed, charcoal gray and lime green right. go beautifully together. Um, navy blue and lime green also go beautifully together. So um, I wouldn't be afraid of the color too much as an accent, but I would not do a ton of, I would do very small pieces and there's actually um, there's a company that, well, there's several companies that offer the floor tiles for carpeting. So instead okay. of getting like actual carpet, I always recommend doing floor tiles. So they're, they're basically like cut out pieces, like 18 or 24 inches uh, square that stick down to the floor. And those are great because you can replace one small section rather than into awesome. if there's a stain or something like that. And there's a beautiful one that I've seen a number of practices I really like that's all different grays with with little shots of night lime green in it. It's perfect for that situation. It's just enough right. to tie it together, but not enough to make it like, oh, your theme is lime green, you know? Right. So um, right. I would definitely steer more towards the lights, light grays and charcoal grays, and then bring in very small other doses of that lime green for sure. That's a good tip. Yeah, That's for a sure. Good tip because Just sprinkle it in. Yeah. Yeah, sprinkle. exactly. <laughs> Just a touch. Just a touch. But yeah, I mean, doing things like doing things on your own DIY is so great. Right. And we have so many things, uh, so many, um, I mean, you can YouTube anything, right? You can right. Inspiration from Pinterest. You can watch the HGTV shows. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we can do. And in fact, early on, I had a conversation with a doctor who had done just that. He bought a practice. His is literally on the beach. Um, and so, of course, that's the feeling that he wants to. And, right. and he replaced the flooring in one of the operatories. And of course, you know, replacing flooring, you have to move chairs and, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. So it's not like it's a super fast job, um, especially if that's your um, weekend warrior job. Yeah. Um, right. You know. It's going to take some time, but it can be done. It can be done on their own, for sure. So I oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I know I you've given a lot of great tips, and I know one of the th exercises you do with your clients is called your broken windows exercise. Can you tell us more about? That? Absolutely, love to. Um, so there's a book written by Michael Levine. The book is called Broken Windows, Broken Business. It's one of my favorite books. And it's based on a premise that if a business has a small thing wrong, like if there's one small thing, like as his example, a small broken window, and he was specifically talking about like 
when the corner of a business, the or, uh, when the corner of a window in a business on the street front gets mm -hmm. uh, um, like a crack in it or something like that. So he wasn't talking about a big window break, right? Just a small thing. But when there's small things that are broken about a business, it is an indicator of a bigger problem, right? And so I always think about when I'm on a road trip and I need to use the restroom. I'm a good patron and I don't, A, I will not go to a gas station restroom if I can. <laughs> Unless it's Bucky's. In Texas, we have Bucky's and Bucky's is the best ever. Um, and I take friends from out of town. We go to Bucky's, believe it or not. So anyway, um, unless it's Bucky's, I don't go to the restroom in a in a gas station. So I typically will stop at a fast food restaurant or something like that, or Starbucks or something along those lines, and um, use the restroom. And because I'm a good patron, I'm always going to. My intention is always to buy something um, for using the restroom, right? And when you go into a restroom at one of these restaurants. And it's, you know, the commode is overflowing or there's paper towels overflowing from the garbage or there's, you know, water and soap all over the sink or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever that looks like. We've all been in those, right? Immediately, our thought goes to what's the kitchen look like, right? Right. A dirty restroom in that case is an indicator of a bigger problem. And sure. it's the same thing in a dental practice. It's the same thing in any business. Um, if there is, you know, when we walk into a dental practice, if there's my big pet peeve is when there's light bulbs that are out. Um, oh. <laughs> there's light bulbs that are out or really old magazines or dust everywhere or a ton of clutter at the front desk um, or pictures that are old or all of those or stains on the carpet or stained ceiling tiles. Mm -hmm. Has a drop ceiling with those ceiling tiles in it. Mm -hmm. Almost every single one of them has at least one stained ceiling tile somewhere in the practice where a patient can see it, not necessarily um, delegated just to the staff lounge, right? Where they don't care, right? Which they should, but they don't. Um, you know, those are all broken windows. And so this exercise I developed for over years doing with practices as a consultant where we walk through the entire practice and we start in the parking lot and I have them get, I have a form that I have them fill out. Um, and it's got three columns on it, things that are zero to fix or clean up things that are going to cost, um, under $50 and things that are going to cost over $50 to fix or update or whatever. And I have the entire team each with their own sheet um, fill out that form. And I believe it's important to have each person fill out their own form because if you have 10 staff members and six of them say the same thing, that's a great representation of the percentage of your patient population that's going to notice the same thing. Sure. So I think it's important for everybody to have their own form. I tell teams, don't talk while you're doing this. This is a closed ballot thing that you're writing on this <laughs> form, right? Because I want, I want you guys to really get a feel for what your patients see. And by doing this in, in silence and not talking about what you're sharing and pointing things out to each other, you're going to get a really much better feel of what your patients are seeing. So we start in the parking lot and we look at the front of the building. First of all, of course, it's all about signage. How's their sign? Right. Right? That's the number one thing. But then looking at the actual entrance, you know, what's the landscaping look like? Is there trash flowing through the parking lot? Um, every practice has a light above their door. Typically, you know, there's a probably a code where they have the can light above the door and there's always spider webs and bugs in there. Right? Bugs. And, yep. The bugs, the bugs. Um, you know, is there bugs in the windows? Is there signs that are faded or curling because they're old or whatever? Are you trying to communicate things that you should be telling people? Are you trying to communicate through signage? That's not appropriate right? That's putting a wall up between you and you. Right. And then we walk into the practice and the whole group, I just have everybody stand in each room, sit in every chair that a patient would sit in, right? And listen, what are the sounds that you're hearing? What are the smells that you're smelling? And then sit there with your patient eyes on and look left, look right, look up and look down. And what do you see? And write everything that you see in those columns, stained ceiling tiles, fixing the light bulbs, changing the color 
I'm a big person on making sure that the light bulb temperatures are the same. I know that seems like a really picky thing, but it's, it's, I notice it and I know other I people it. notice it. Right. It. Yep. And so, and we walk through the entire practice that way. And again, it's not just about what they see, but it's about what they hear and smell. There was one practice that I was in, um, in, they were in Santa Fe, I believe. And they, um, had an older practice and it was one of those where the, you know, the, the reception area and the front desk was central. And then there was a big long loop, right. All the way around. And every room had a door on it and you walk down the halls and it's all just doors. Well, that's okay. That's fine. But every single one of them squeaked loudly open and closed. So the whole day, all you heard was squeaking door. It was like a haunted house. It was <laughs> right. So um, those are the, the kinds of things that I have them point um, put down on their paper. And I have them action plan together, put them all on one page, action plan together, how you're going to get these things done. What I find that is so fascinating about this and what is so exciting to me is a lot of times doctors are like really a little nervous when we start to sit down because they're going to be like, they're going to want me to put all this money into the place and I can't do this and they don't take care of things and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then the team members are going, he's not going to do anything anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right? But what's funny is that when we get it all down and we start to action plan, how are we going to get this done as a team? How are we going to get through the things that, we can get through. Now, of course, team members aren't going to spend money on it, but I also tell the team, doctor cannot be expected to do this entire list. He needs help with it. Right. And I've never yet had a team that didn't jump in to get all of the under zero uh, or the zero cost stuff, the things that are, are that cost no money, the cleanup. Mm -hmm. it, every single team jumps on board to get those done stay invested. And then doctors see that. And now they're excited to put some money in because now they know that the practice is going to be taken care of and the investment that they're making is going to be taken care of. And so team, I, I find it to be a very powerful team exercise. Mm -hmm. And I love doing, I love leading that exercise. So I wrote an ebook about it because I thought, you know, a lot of people do this. Awesome. Um, and so the ebook is on my website. It's called, If These Walls Could Talk. And it's a book, it's an ebook that talks all about how to go through the process, what, what the theory comes from. So where mm -hmm. broken windows theory comes from, how to do the exercise. It comes with the form. It comes with a whole lot of suggestions of things that I see consistently and a whole lot of suggestions of where to look. Um, it has, and then at the end, a whole lot of solutions to offer about how to fix these things and what suggestions I found, especially when it comes to organization and um, moving things around. And, you know, um, if I say, if you find that you have a lot of clutter on your countertops in the treatment rooms, then I give some suggestions of how you can reduce that clutter. So a lot of things like that. So it's a really a full, full package when you get that. And of course that is, I offer that for free on my website. So fantastic. That sounds like an awesome resource. Well, I and think this can... is an exercise anybody should do. Right. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're marketing, if you're not marketing, if you're thinking of actively marketing and spending mm -hmm. money, you have to make sure that the experience is going to be good. It's going to make people feel sense. It's going to make people feel good. Absolutely. So I absolutely walk through it with your team members because all it takes is one wrong impression and that patient's absolutely. not coming back. And that's a problem. <laughs> right. And it, and it needs to feel consistent with what you guys are doing with the branding and the, and the website. Absolutely. All of that needs to feel very consistent. And if you have a beautiful website and then and somebody chooses you, I chose my dentist when I moved here to Austin, I chose my dentist based on her website. And because I didn't know anybody here to ask for word of mouth. I had no one to give me a recommendation. And so when I did that, um, and she had this beautiful site. Her practice also reflected that that upscale look. I was I loved on her website, and so it needs to yeah. be consistent. Would it, and if it didn't, it would almost be like like shocking, almost Absolutely. a little bit of an abrupt. Like this is not almost like a bait and switch. What I was right, 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 and that's not something your patients want mm -hmm. to to feel exactly. ever. 
So Right. And I know we have clients that when we're building the site and we're asking for photos of the practice so we can incorporate them in to different pages on the site or doing an office tour, and we get those photos back, we're like, are these your most recent yeah. photos? And they're like, well, yes. Okay. Well, now I can say, now let me introduce you to my friend, Andrea. Yes. I mean, that Andrea. Right. <laughs> but um, before it was like, well – all right, you still have like paneling on the walls, but we're talking about the latest and greatest technology. To to your point, if I walk into that practice because I came to you because of your website, I might stay because I don't want to be rude and just walk out, but I'm right. most likely not going to hang around right. or, or right. be a loyal patient because I feel a little duped because yes. I thought I was coming in for one thing and got another. And it, they may have spent their money on having the the lasers and the latest and greatest hand pieces and um, same day crowns and things like that. But I've already made my judgment, like you've said, of walking in going, oh, it's it's old in here. Right. Like I'll let them clean my teeth, but that's probably going to be about it. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We have to look at all of our equipment too, the same way, you know, right. um, the, you know, the, 12 o'clock, all of, all of the fixed pieces, all of the fixed stuff needs to be, it looks mm -hmm. look updated. Mm -hmm. Right. I was just talking to a client yesterday that had to unexpectedly replace all of her hand pieces. Oh, wow. And when she did, she said that she saw as an opportunity to upgrade to now the hand pieces that don't make as much noise. Wonderful. So to your point of like, what are you hearing? What are you smelling? Instead of hearing that sound of the drill, which we know gives so many people anxiety, you know, she has beautiful hand pieces that she said you really can't hear them at all over the the suction and other things that are happening that and aren't really as scary as that like that drill sound That's awesome. coming at you. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you also talk about, you know, creating a space that the staff is excited to come to every day, right. you know, yeah. building that loyalty and retention with the staff because they are, they have pride in right. their workspace and they're right. excited to be part of it. I feel like this is something that might be a little bit super close to your heart. You said something a little bit earlier where you're like, they, you know, it's in the staff's room and they don't really care about it, but they should. Like, I feel like that maybe is a little near and dear to, Absolutely. to you because it can certainly affect their attitude. Absolutely. I think it, you know, it's interesting because as a, as an entrepreneur, I work from home, as you can see, right? So I work from home. And when I first started working from home, um, even though I love my living room and I felt very comfortable working there and having it visible on my screen, um, I was facing a wall. So my desk was facing a wall and I felt like everything was, my creativity just really stopped because I was facing that wall. And so I moved my desk up into this room. I, I finally made the decision to not keep a bedroom for a guest bedroom that gets used two or three times a year, but rather <laughs> office, right? And so now I have my office and I'm so much more creative. I'm looking out right now um, over a green space that, you know, it's just beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. My creativity really skyrocketed. And what I feel like that does, and I see so many solopreneurs do this, entrepreneurs do this, they don't show the hard work that they do, the honor that it deserves. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so in order for us to be happy and creative and um, really enjoy going to work in our space, we need to make it so that we want to be there. It needs to look, mm -hmm. it needs to be organized. It needs to feel good. And the same is exactly true with the team. You know, I mean, it's, it's really sad, but I feel like this, the staff lounge area is the last area to get um, any attention. Um, oftentimes when a, when a doctor is, when a doctor is, uh, building a space, they, that's the first space to go if they find that room is tight, right. Um, in the, uh, in their floor plan. Um, and they're really, it's like cutting off your nose to spite your face, right? Mm -hmm, right. Any functions to a staff room other than a place to have to sit and eat your lunch. We can have meetings in there. 
We can really brainstorm. We can have camaraderie in there. Um, it's a place for people to get away from the patients because sometimes we don't do that. And it, how fair is it that the doctor has that room, but not the team, right? Um, right? And if they have to go to the bathroom to get away from it for a minute, that's very fair either, right? Um, and so, Nobody wants to recharge in the restroom. No. Let's be real. Let's no. be honest. <laughs> My goodness. Um, and, you know, and also um, I worked with one doctor who had a very, very small practice, very small. And so tight space was incredibly limited. And she had a small closet for her own office, but there was no staff lounge. So her office became the staff lounge. Yeah. They all ate lunch together. The staff would sit on the floor because there wasn't room for another chair. And you know, they'd sit in the doctor's office and she hated it. Because she had nowhere to get away, but the staff hated it too, because they couldn't get away from I mean, there was no place to get away, right? So if you have a staff lounge, I think it's important to make it not an afterthought. Put, mm -hmm. put the um put some effort into making that space a place that people like to be, and because it makes them feel like they're honored. It makes them feel like they have a say. And as part of the practice. And if you, you know, our message cannot be to our teens, just like it can't be with patients that we're high technology, but we look like we're out of the 80s, right? With our team, right. it can't be, you're really important, except I'm not going to devote any space to you and any space that I do devote to you is the, is where everything gets shoved when, when we have, um, you know, when people come into the practice or if we have an excess of supplies or mm -hmm. somewhere. So we're going to stack them up in the corner of the staff lounge. It's not fair. And it, it really gives, um, it sends a very clear message of value right. to the team members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to think about. Well, then that has obviously a snowball effect on Everything, Everything else, you know, Everything. Re retention of your employees, mm -hmm. Absolutely. how well they treat the patients, how happy they are, how motivated they are, their mm -hmm. attitude throughout the day, like mm -hmm. all of it, what seems like, could seem like something really little mm -hmm. is really huge. Yeah. And are they going to even promote the practice? Right. It comes into marketing. So, or is it going to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I come in here, I do my job, I yeah, go home I and collect that's a that. Right. right. So, um, and involving them and then if it some teams are very comfortable or doctors rather are very comfortable with letting their teams have some say in what goes in that staff lounge you know what how do we decorate that of course i think it needs to be um realistic and we shouldn't put you know hot pink walls and you know or <laughs> you know whatever a toy pond in the floor and yeah we don't we don't want to put you know posters of pick your boyfriend of choice up on the <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, whatever it, it needs to be a professional space, but I think it needs to be, and it needs to be a space that you can have meetings in. I think, um, away from patients, it's terrible as a consultant. It's very frustrating. Um, when if not, I shouldn't say frustrating, but it can be a challenge hosting, um, meetings with the entire team. And we're all sitting out on the front lawn, uh, lounge in the reception area and patients need to pay a bill or the mailman comes or whatever it, it just can be a challenge yeah, yeah i can, I can absolutely yeah. imagine that yeah absolutely especially if we're talking about numbers i'm sorry no it's okay no. especially if you're discussing numbers or talking about oh, right business which you should be at every staff meeting right mm -hmm. we have that information on the wall we don't want patients to see that right right absolutely you don't want the mailman to see it either no this absolutely. is your business and and, and they don't understand the connotation that they would take away would be very, very much not what that's about. Right. Right. Oh, so, right. You know, it's just, a, it's a, we have to understand that they don't understand what that is. Right. So I know we talked a lot today about, you know, more of your, you know, you're the Joanna Marie of dentistry, but Ooh, I like it. But focus more of on your like Joanna side today. But you also have that Marie Kondo side where you help organize, which is I know what gets Allie uh -huh. really excited. Um, by, and I know we've talked before about 
you know, when offices have those unexpected expenses, it's because they haven't prepared for them or set aside budget for that. Or maybe they're overspending on things that are as silly as office supplies or kits to do um, impressions or something like that because they just are buying things to buy them because it says it's the fifth of the month and this is when I reorder my supplies. Right. And you have a great system that you help um, practices with. It makes you like that Marie Marie Kondo side of you that's like, let's get organized and let's be smarter about this. So, yeah. I mean, we could probably talk about that oh for days gosh. as well. Absolutely. And it may be a topic for it may be a topic for another podcast to have you back. But could you give uh, the dentist just a sneak peek about that side of your business and what you do to help with organization? Sure. Um, so work, I work with both the front and the back side. So um, inventory in the back dental supplies is so incredibly important to have a handle and an excellent organized system. Um, because A, I mean, there's so many reasons. Um, we want to prevent overspending. Probably even more important than that, we want to prevent from ever running out of something that we need, right? right. We want to prevent the overspending. We want to prevent things from expiring. It's amazing how when we uh, if we over order or let me let me just challenge offices this way. If you were to clear out all of your cupboards and throw away or donate, some places will take expired material. Um, uh, schools, I'm sorry, schools and um, charity charity um, organizations that provide dentistry overseas or, you know, doctors without board mm -hmm. things, they'll take um, donated supplies, even if they're expired. Um, but it's amazing how if you pull all of the stuff out of your cabinets, right, um, and you get it out there and you throw away everything that's expired, you'll be shocked how much stuff you throw away. And that I'm sure because we don't that happens because there is not a good system for ordering. And so having that tracking is incredibly important. Um, mm -hmm. Also having it organized and in front of you. So um, I don't know that there's a, an organization um, or a business rather um, out there called Zen Supplies um, that I absolutely love. Um, and I, it's, it was started by a young man uh, named Tiger Severov and he is out of Chicago, but he works with practices doing this as well. And he is exactly on the same page that your supplies need to be front and center. They should not be hidden in a cupboard. I'm not a fan of having a wall of cupboards with doors on them with stuff that I can't see. So um, I believe that your supplies need to be out. And if you organize them beautifully, patients love them. They love seeing a wall of tilt bins with all of the supplies organized neatly in there. Like that. It's amazing how many practices when they implement that even if that part is behind closed doors i had one practice they took those doors off and their patients walked by this little it's a cabinet about oh probably five feet tall um floor to four five feet tall to the floor um of tilt bins all different sizes with all of their organ and the patients absolutely love it because it makes them feel like they're being taken care of because we're so organized right um, and so making sure that they're front and center, that you have a good system of when do you restock and when do you reorder? Um, and that's, uh, in part what Zen supplies does, um, tag systems also work well if they are worked appropriately. One thing to know is that, um, you know, if we have a tag system that's, um, specifically designed to order all from one company. That's just an ordering system. It's not really a um, an inventory system, right? So because you're not necessarily saving the money um, if you're all, always ordering from one company. And so your savings might be better if you're um, shopping a little bit. Um, but we also need to be mindful of how much time we're spending on that shopping. Because mm -hmm. it's a big money suck right there. So all of those things are things that Zen Supplies helps with. But that's what I, I can also come into an office and help them start to implement something along those lines so that they have a very clear understanding of what their inventory is. I'm a big believer in central storage. 
and everything gets stocked from that rather than having a little bit stocked in every single room that is where we pull from, right? right. It needs to be really highly organized. And then in the front office, working with um, the business team on under, basically organizing their supplies, making it make sense. Your paper goods go one place, your writing utensils and other office supplies along those lines go in another place rather than having it all mixed different cabinetry throughout the practice Mm -hmm. it always starts with the same same process which is you pull it all out Marie Kondo style you pull everything out right and you go through it and you test everything you make sure you throw away the broken things and the pens that don't work um it's amazing how many pens you'll throw away if you test them all Mm -hmm. (laughs) lots of pen during the day you come across a pen a writing utensil and it's dried out or not working Throw it away. Don't save it. Get rid of it. Later. Forget it. Just throw it away. Right. (laughs) Um, You know, all the little things like that um, Mm -hmm. be really uh, important. And and I have to say, there is nothing that makes me happier than a beautifully organized cupboard of office. (laughs) (laughs) It truly does float my boat. When I see (laughs) see that and I um, stumbled years ago across a fantastic office supply organization modular system that I recommend to every practice. And it just looks lovely when we get it all done. It's not necessarily something I would keep the cabinets open for the patients, <laughs> but if they did get a glimpse of it, they wouldn't be bothered by it at all. They wouldn't look at it and say, Oh gosh, that's a lot of, you know, repurposed, um, you know, check boxes that we have our pens in and, you know, stuff like that. So um, it can definitely be a great system and it keeps everything, uh, makes it easy for everybody else to find. Nobody's going to be mm-hmm. sitting behind the right. desk. Hey, do you have another pen? Right. They know where to go to get it. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you have it like that, it, it, when you have it organized and everybody understands where to get it and where to put things back, everything stays organized ever so much nicer. Absolutely. And I know you've already mentioned some things that uh, the viewers can go on to your website and download for free. And I'm sure there's a lot that they're that that's easy that they can do themselves. Yes. But I'm sure like some of us that look at our closets at home or our kitchen cabinets at home and think, if I could just bring somebody else in to do this. That to this- alphabetize these spices. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> do it. See, this brings Allie joy. Right, yes. It does not does not bring me joy. I do it because I have to. And I'm sure there's lots of dentists out there. They're like, this clearly brings Andrea joy. Yes. How do I contact her? Where do I go? Because this is her passion and it's not mine. So where where's the best place to find you? What's the best way to contact you? Um, so my website is onpointspace.com. And there's all kinds of um, information about me and with the services that I offer on that website and my ebook on there as well. Um, my email is Andrea at onpoint.consulting. It's a little bit different than my website um, and uh, easily contacted through my website on that. But definitely, I would love for everybody to go on and request that e- ebook um, because it's a great guide for a fantastic meeting and especially as we're nearing the end of the year this is a great team meeting um for people to do to plan for next year and really start Mm -hmm. 2020 off on a really great foot and if if it's all right with you i'd like to speak just a second about this whole concept of bringing joy right because that's really been Mm -hmm. um that's really something that um has been kind of a buzzword for the last couple years and i think a lot of it is marie kondo Right. Um, as if people aren't familiar, her process is, is that when you know that you um, with each thing that you're going through, if you're looking at your closet, you pick up your piece of clothing and you ask, does this thing really spark joy? Now, that maybe feels a little food, people, right? A little like mm, that's a little bit out there, really. But what she's asking is, do I feel good when I put this on? Do I love the way I feel? Do I love the way I look? Do I get compliments from this? And if I don't, is it something that needs to be taking up space in my world? Right. So those are the, that's really what that is. That sparking joy is, is about how does this really make me feel right? Mm -hmm. It's another book that I highly recommend that actually brought all of this very um, clear into very clear focus 
um, that I was released early this year and I read it and a friend recommended it and said, I'm thinking of you on every single page. I, everything she's saying is you. And the book is called Joyful. And the author, author is Ingrid Fattel Lee. So it's Ingrid Fattel is F as in Frank, E-T-E-L-L, -L, and then Lee. Um, and she wrote this book called Joyful. And she basically, I will let the readers read about how she developed it, but she understands as a designer that there are some aesthetics, some specific things that make us feel really good. And this is important because with patients, there are reasons why they might feel good in our practice. When a patient looks at a wall of dental supplies that are organized beautifully, they feel it makes them feel good because it is a sense of harmony. So everything is lined up. Everything is organized. So it makes them see a sense of harmony. It sent there's uh, shapes um, and colors that we all know that we feel better in natural sunlight than when we don't have natural sunlight. Right. Mm -hmm. So light and color, there are certain colors that make us feel certain ways. In marketing, I know that you deal with that all the time, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. To bring certain colors into our logos, our clients' logos, because these mm -hmm. oak feelings in us. So this is a very real thing. I was talking about my space and moving my uh, desk out away from my wall so that I'm facing a window. And, and that's all part of this. How do we feel? How, how what we do makes us feel good. It's all about how our surroundings can make us feel good. And, and she really talks about how if we feel good in our surroundings, we're going to be able to do much better in business for our clients and be able to feel they're going to feel that from us. And so I really do believe that this whole concept of joy is so incredibly important and we need to not discount any of it. We need to really bring that into our business. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's all, it's also so important. So important. It is. So we know that we know that people can contact you directly at yes. Andrea at on point dot consulting. Yes. Correct. And then if they want to see you live and in person, you have some upcoming events that are happening in 2020. I do. I'll be speaking at the Chicago Midwinter um, in February. I am working uh, or I'm going to be speaking also at a uh, spring session of Action to Win with Dr. Emily Latran. Um, and that'll be in Houston. And then I'm speaking at the ADON conference, which will be held in Boca Raton in September. And awesome. at the Dental Assisting National Conference for Excellence in Chicago in October. And hopefully Fantastic. more in June. So You're awesome. busy, busy. I'm busy, busy. I love it. Fantastic. Well, this is awesome because I know it's it's one thing to listen to the podcast or watch the podcast or go online, but seeing in you live and in person is certainly a different experience. So we'll make sure to list all of those mm -hmm. dates as well for everyone Great. in the description of this podcast. So if they're interested in going to any of those conferences to see Andrea, you can just click on the link and be directed to to the conference. Yep. To Wonderful. The conference. And Thank same you. thing with your ebook. We'll include a link out to that mm -hmm. as well as separately to your main website too. Beautiful. So everybody can access all of the good things that we we've right. shared today. Thank you. Well, we so. really appreciate your time, Andrea. Um, thank it's bright you. Bright and early because I know you're a little bit behind us on time too. <laughs> yes, so. but thank Getting you. Getting up out of bed bright and early to join us on a Friday. <laughs> um, <here. laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I was not. I had been up for a while <laughs> when we first connected, and I didn't have all my makeup on. I a little bit. <laughs> been working. That's okay. Hey, that's fine. Okay, we camera. roll with it. We <laughs> roll with it. So. so, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today and, and sharing all of your wonderful advice. We Thank hope you. to talk to you again soon, and I hope to meet you in person. Soon. Likewise, <laughs> likewise. I'm sure it will happen. She might come hang out with you just for fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Are you accepting oh, interns? <laughs> <laughs>